Now, we did figure out what our next challenges are. The next mountain we have to climb to go to the next level. So what are these next challenges? First of all, 3G networking, faster networking. <laughs> Second of all, enterprise support, as we've heard. Third, third-party application support. Fourth, we need to sell iPhone in more countries. How do we know this? Well, we've sold iPhone in six countries so far, but believe me, they're in use in many more countries. <laughs> they are in use all over the world. And uh, so it's clear there is a demand for iPhones in many more countries. And last but not least, everybody wants an iPhone, but we need to make it more affordable. And we know this because we go out and talk to people who didn't buy iPhones, and the number one reason by far they all want one is they just can't afford it. Some of them can't afford it. So we need to make the iPhone more affordable. So as we arrive at iPhone's first birthday, we're going to take it to the next level. And today, we're introducing the iPhone 3G. We've learned so much with the first iPhone. We've taken everything we've learned and more, and we've created the iPhone 3G. And it's beautiful. This is what it looks like. <laughs> it's even thinner at the edges. It's really beautiful. It's got a full plastic back. It's really nice. Solid metal buttons. The same gorgeous 3.5 inch display. Camera. Flush headphone jack, so you can use any headphones you like. <clears throat> improved audio, dramatically improved audio. It's really, really great. And it feels even better in your hand, if you can believe it. It's really quite wonderful, the iPhone 3G. Now, how does the iPhone 3G tackle these things? Well, let's take a look. First of all, let's take a look at 3G. Why do you want 3G? Well, you want it for faster data downloads, right? And there's nowhere that you want faster data downloads more than the browser and downloading email attachments. So let's take a look at these first. First, the browser. We've taken an iPhone 3G and on the same phone in the same location, downloaded a website on Edge and downloaded the same website using 3G, and we've captured the videos. So let's see how we do. We're off to the races here. A website with a lot of images on it, complex layout. 21 seconds on 3G. All right, 59 seconds on edge. So same phone, same location, 3G 2.8 times faster. But it's even more remarkable when you take a look at this next to Wi-Fi. 
you can see that the 3G speeds are actually approaching Wi-Fi. This has been my experience using the phone as well. It's amazingly zippy. <laughs> this is also pretty amazing. We took two other state-of-the-art 3G phones, downloaded the same web pages, and the iPhone 3G is 36% faster than the Nokia N95 or the Treo 750. So that's pretty cool. And look at the result, by the way. <laughs> look at what you get, a full web page on the iPhone and something quite a bit less on some of these other products. 36% faster. So now let's uh, look at a very typical scenario. You've got an email attachment you want to look at. You tap on it. Let's do the same thing here, same phone, same place. The 3G version downloads in five seconds. And the Edge version in 18 seconds, that is 3.6 times faster on the 3G version. So we can see a real difference now of download speeds. And again, if we compare this to Wi-Fi, you'll see that the 3G is approaching Wi-Fi speeds. So we clearly can get faster data. One of the things we're also really proud of, though, is we're doing this with great battery life. The iPhone 3G, the battery life, the standby life, or the standby time, we've pushed to 300 hours of standby time. 2G talk time, we've been able to move up from 8 hours to 10 hours. On 2G talk time, these other, th or 3G talk time, excuse me, these other phones have 3G talk time in the 3 to 3.5 three hour range. We've managed to get five hours of 3G talk time, which is really an industry-leading amount of time. We're very pleased with this. Browsing, five to six hours of high-speed browsing. Video, seven hours. And audio, we've managed to get 24 hours of audio. So, Great performance, great battery life. Now, one other thing that benefits from fast data, of course, is GPS. And we've built that into the new iPhone 3G as well. So, as you know, location services is going to be a really big deal on the iPhone with the iPhone 2.0 software. You saw a bit of that here today. It's going to explode. And of course, we get data from cell towers, location data. We get location data from Wi-Fi. And now, we also get it from GPS. And using the GPS data, we can actually do tracking. So as an example here, we're going to drive down. We recorded this on Lombard Street. Lombard Street's a fun street in San Francisco that zigs and zags. And here we are driving down Lombard Street. And we can actually track as we move using GPS. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. You get the idea. <laughs> so built-in GPS and much, much faster data. So we think we can check off 3G and add built-in GPS to boot. OK. <laughs> Next, on to enterprise support, as we explained earlier, full Microsoft Exchange support using ActiveSync built into iPhone 2.0 software, all of the secure VPN and the other security standards, everything everybody's asked for built in. And we've gotten tremendous feedback from enterprise users that we are on exactly the right track. 
and we know we can now check off enterprise support. Third-party applications, the SDK, the great tools, you saw the great apps, and we've got the best way to distribute them in the world. We think we can check off third-party application support. More countries. We distribute iPhone in six countries today. We set ourselves the goal of 12 countries for the iPhone 3G and a stretch goal of getting to 25 countries over the next several months. Well, how do we do? Let me show you. 